Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Johan Kim. I'm president of RFA. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you've already met a couple of my colleagues on our previous panels, uh, but just to give you just a brief uh, introduction to the company. Uh, our company works in the alternative asset management space, as uh, Michael uh, just mentioned. Uh, we are focused primarily mostly on uh, hedge funds, private equity firms, family offices, fund the funds. So more than investment managers, uh, fully alternative mass asset managers. Um, more recently, I would say, uh, probably even with the headlines that you have seen, a lot of focus has been on the cybersecurity end. Uh, just again, like Michael mentioned, a lot has been uh, based on uh, investor-driven strategies, but it's actually also more practical. It's because um, you know a lot of uh, you know hackers out there have really started to focus on the alternative asset industry because. What you get is a lot of these small companies. So if, you, if you're thinking about large bank, banks and investment banks, JP Morgans, for instance, they're going to put a lot of uh, focus and um, uh, resources into their cybersecurity footprint. Uh, predominantly, hedge funds and private equity companies that manage billions of dollars would only have you know, 20, 50 people and a very small cybersecurity footprint. So what happened was a lot of people started you know, attacking these very specific small companies uh, because of that. Uh, now, with industry and with investors, they, uh, you know, put kind of the lockdown on, okay, you're going to have to have a better footprint. So RFA has been in business around 30, 30 years. Um, we have offices. We're headquartered in London and New York City. We have offices in uh, Massachusetts throughout the East Coast, uh, in San Francisco, uh, and also just in Luxembourg uh, this year. So uh, we cover a pretty large base of um, people on the alternative asset industry. Uh, we have around 680 clients worldwide. And what we have seen is we've had to get in early on on this you know, change in how cybersecurity needs to be managed. Um, as we all know, people had to go past the entire, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the firewalls and, and, and the network security. It had to get a little more intelligent, right? So what happened, uh, you would have a, a few, you know, SOCs and MDR services that we would partner with. Uh, we actually partnered with a company uh, before Sekion uh, was involved. Um, Maybe we started three, four, uh, I'm sorry, four or five years ago. And this was more of a traditional SOC where they had, um, you know, a lot of managed services on, you know, they, they would just basically, we would just feed them uh, logs and information and they would come back to our desk with tickets saying, okay, this is, you know, this is a threat and 90% of the time there were false positives. So what happened was, uh, you know, in, in light of what's been going on with machine learning and AI, uh, Gregory, our CTO, and Michael, our CIO, uh, started this entire uh, testing period and, uh, with our R&D department on, on Sekion services. Um, because we're in the financial industry, uh, we, had, we, we can't just um, put products out there uh, just because, uh, you know, it sounds good. We actually had to go through a pretty rigorous testing process. So uh, I think we went through around eight months of actual side-by-side -side testing. And what this did for us was it actually helped us uh, switch our clients and actually tell the, tell the story of why, uh, you know, machine learning and AI works in this type of industry. So it, what we do normally is we, we consult our clients. We're not going in to just sell them something because they need to check the box. They need to have an understanding of what it's going to do and why it's practical for them. So if you think of AI machine learning, the way we basically put it is we tell them that there is something that machines and computers can do much more prof proficiently than people. So if you think about a SOC, for instance, or even a help desk, uh, or even our company, the, the most highest costing uh, operations center is actually people. Salaries actually take up the biggest expense in our business, and, and most companies as well. But what that means is that the strategy is going to people that are constantly looking at information and logs and trying to spit out, uh, you know, specific threats uh, uh, that are happening in the network. Now, where AI 
is so beautiful in this sense is that it could process way more information and it's way more consistent. And the, the best part about this is that it actually frees the people to strategize. It actually frees the people to think about what they should do when they get a real threat and how to react to it. And this is kind of the shift that RFA has also made because of Sekion. Because when you actually have something that takes away a lot of the false positives, I mean, I, I believe we eliminated around 90% of false positives that, that's been coming in. We actually started thinking about how to react. And that's when the true MDR solution came to be for even RFA. And we were actually able to, we actually created more resources for ourselves to create a team that would actually think and strategize about how to react, how to do these things. And then from there, we actually started building our platform on top of that as well. Because Sekion has been doing such a good job in actually parsing out all this information and providing correct and right real information, real threats, even if it's a, a, a log or, or an action that's generated um, that's not a real hacker, but it's something that's legitimately should be looked into. To give you an example, um, what we tell some of our clients is, you know, it, it'll, it'll tag or alert a lot of like, data information uh, leaving a certain, uh, you know, certain office that it shouldn't be. Or pattern-based pattern -based activities of uh, logging in, if somebody, you know, logged in in China, for instance. You know, sometimes our clients will be like, well, that was me, but, you know, thanks for asking. These are the type of things that's a real value add for our clients because they're not just checking the box for their investors, not just checking the box for, um, you know, the regulators. It's actual real practical information. And I think that's what actually started really driving uh, our clients to really uh, onboard Sekion. And uh, for RFA, uh, Ourselves, we actually started building that platform to actually log, monitor uh, our actual reaction times and actually to start teaching ourselves and our team members what to do in the case of certain instances. So if you think about it in the sense of if Sekion was a product that was going to tell us something's wrong, we started actually having the resources and, and time and strategy uh, time to actually build something that said, this is what we're going to do if it happens. And then as we started building this database, uh, we were able to start automating it ourselves and then actual thinking of true uh, reactive uh, you know, fixes. And, and, and I, feel like, I feel like that's kind of like the future of how you know, this business is going to go. Um, you know, it's, it's something that we speak to the, 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 the technology and uh, um, executive team in Sekion about all the time because we actually see how this could be um, in the future. You know, what's going to happen in, in two to five years on how this is going to build. And it's only going to be better because, like I said before, it actually leaves our teams for strategy. And I think uh, that's what's beautiful about even the Sekion team. They don't have to build an enormous SOC all over the world. They just have to worry about the strategy because the AI is being learned through people's reactions, right? And, and that's, that's, you know, I think the beauty of AI, I think, um, you know, the way we actually present it to our clients and how it's been accepted was actually just teaching them those little things, uh, you know, because they get a little overwhelmed as soon as they say uh, machine learning or AI, they have no idea what you're talking about. A lot of people still think it's just automation, and it's not, right? And, and I think that's that kind of approach for, you know, that consultative, I wouldn't even say sale, but that consultation that actually it really helps the sales process. So, uh, I mean, that's what we've been doing. Uh, we actually just uh, released a, a statement today saying that we're actually op opening up our platform. Uh, we've been working uh, together with a lot of people, uh, including Sekion, and, and uh, like I mentioned, even developing this product. And what we realized was that it's been helping our internal teams, our internal technical teams, how to react to all these different uh, these uh, different errors and, and logs, and uh, we said, why not give it to the rest of the world? So that's kind of where uh, we are right now. Any questions? No. Uh, we have around 680 clients, so I would say anywhere from an investment manager from 100 and $150 million to 
the largest being the world's largest PE firm to, you know, hundreds of billions. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you said you reduced false positives by less than 9%. Yeah, actually, uh, Psycheon did. Uh, yes, well, uh, in ROI, yeah, actually, it's funny because it was a different move, right? So, Sekion was the platform sending us alerts for us to react to. Previously, it was a SOC that was us, sending us alerts. So, they were receiving the information. They were trying to figure out if it was a false positive, and then they would just send it to our technical team to react. And then what our technical team had to do was actually take that information and then see if it was a real false positive. It was kind of like double work. And then at a certain point, that's why we actually started looking at other platforms because one day we just kind of said, well, we're just doing the same exact thing that this other SOC is doing. This makes absolutely no sense. What we want to focus on is how to react and, 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 and strategy for, for getting it to stop. So as far as the actual ROI, we actually, didn't have a spend. So the thing is, like, we actually converted the cost into profit, whereas before it was kind of a reselling model, right? And I think that's kind of like the big difference in how our business uh, transformed with, with Sekion. Yeah. Any other questions? So, uh, so I was uh, I was trying to figure out that the uh, as you expand, this is going to make a big dent in terms of uh, how the business grows, and uh, and what type of uh, uh, value that you think you are going to be able to provide to the uh, MSPs who are transforming to MSSP. Right. Uh, and uh, right. you know what uh, your take on that whole. Uh, Business, uh, model yeah. transformation is would be very very useful. I think. Absolutely, I mean I think you know we we actually have a lot of steps and stages, uh, or actually maybe even phases that we've thought out uh, as soon as we release uh, this new platform. Um, but uh, since you specifically uh, mentioned the MSP space, uh, we are an MSP, so we're a managed service provider. We're predominantly a little bigger mm -hmm. than. Uh, the majority of them, and then there are obviously the, the gigantic ones, right, like Infosys. But um, predominantly, we have noticed that if we're an MSP, because we know what we would want, right, especially in the security sector, in this type of sector, we know where the future goes, but sometimes you just don't know how to get there, or you don't have the resources. As you know, somebody mentioned, one of the biggest costs that you have in, in trying to almost open up an MSSP is, is creating a SOC. A SOC is going to cost you around $2.8 million, especially if you want redundancies, right? If you're going to service the, the, the uh, financial space and, uh, and they ask you where's your offices and you tell them one, that's 24 seven, it's not going to cut it, right? Because what if something happens to your office all of your clients are basically going to be at risk. So uh, we created a, basically this platform and model to really service the MSP space to, to actually eventually be able to be their own MSSP uh, while actually using offsetting resources, augmenting resources uh, with our own cloud security uh, or our own air security, that's what we're calling it, uh, with Sekion. So what we're offering is, um, basically time-based uh, solutions or just a platform solution in itself. The platform solution would really be something that actually helps with the strategy on how to uh, uh, remediate a lot of the threats. Uh, and that's something that's going to be constantly updated and adjusted uh, through time. Uh, as we all know, all the new threats have, are constantly changing. So uh, this is something that's always updated. Uh, second is that plus uh, service. So that plus service, so for instance, if there is uh, no redundant office or uh, MSP is just starting up, they have maybe 30 people, don't have a 24-7 uh, desk or SOC to watch it, then it's, uh, it's, a, it's an augmented service that we, we are providing. Yeah. So it's really what we want to do, our goal, our end goal is not necessarily to be this white-labeled service for SOC, 
our end goal is actually to just be the platform provider because we believe that eventually with this process and the growth of the MSSP business, people are going to be able to enable themselves to just actually be their own MSPs. We want to work with Sekion to say Sekion is going to provide the alerts, they're going to catch, catch the culprits, and we're going to help resolve. And, and that's kind of where it comes hand, hand, hand in hand. Yep. Any other questions? Yes. Do you have any data on how many problems you can? Absolutely. Our CTO has all of it. He's sitting right there. <laughs> I believe he said around 8 million a day or something like that. Was that right, Greg? Yeah, so. Gregory. So, so currently we, we are processing about, about a billion events a day. Oh, sorry, a billion. <laughs> Way off. Um, <laughs> So out of this billion events, we typically get, I would say, probably about 15, 20 alerts. Um, and uh, out of this 15, 20 alerts, typically maybe one or two, for the most part, are you know very serious. Um, but by very serious, I mean they actually represent a substantial security issue. Uh, about maybe another 30 percent are more related to internal activities that's you know potentially malicious or some kind of internal threat and the rest is more um, typically needs some kind of tweaking thanks Greg any other questions Thanks, uh, Thank thanks, Johan.